Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne. We'll talk a cup of kindness yet for days of old lang syne. And here's a hand, my trusty friend, and here's a hand of thine. We'll talk a cup of kindness yet for all. edition of fiber track where we are celebrating the turning of the year things have definitely changed in our neck of the woods here in northern maine the ice has moved in and you can see we have a very active mink we are headed out in the woods today to gather some materials to work with primarily we'll be working with paper birch but there are 18 native species of birch to North America, and this is the golden birch. I wanted to feature it here because I love that it smells of wintergreen when you scratch the bark away. It can also be tapped, similar to a maple, although you need 110 gallons of sap for one gallon of syrup. So it's a different sugar content. This particular species releases its seeds late in the sp uh, earlier in the spring and so it is a favorite of pileated woodpeckers pine siskins common red poles as well as moose and snowshoe hare so we have an abundance of this particular um, species right up in our back woods and i just thought it would be fun to explore a little bit of its history and lore the paper birch is what we're really after today. We'll be harvesting all of our bark from dead trees. Um, we don't want to rip bark off of living trees. Similar to your skin, it provides layers of protection against infestation and disease. So we'll be looking for um, really any type of deadfall. Um, although if you can find a full tree, um, that will be easier to get the amount of bark that you need uh, for the project. So as I mentioned, we're gonna primarily focus on making this paper birch chain. And you can see why the birch lends itself so easily to this theme. It's very pliable. So when you're looking for materials in your own locale, you're gonna to wanna to think about that trait or characteristic couple things to note when we're harvesting uh, make sure you have permission if you're harvesting not on your own property and you're going to want to make sure that it's a legal species to harvest and you're also going to want to make sure that you understand 
the plant and the regeneration uh, cycle for that plant as you pick it. All of the things that I have uh, are found. Um, All the balsam was found. I trimmed the cedar from trees in my yard and the birch saplings as well from my yard. So be mindful of your harvesting practice when you are doing this type of material finding. Waxwing, waxwing, what do you bring from the frozen north? Waxwing, waxwing, we've been waiting on you. I bring the amber that I have gathered on the northern seashore. Hatchlings I have fathered for thee I've been underground where wyverns are bound And where gold and jewels are bound These are hoarded under my very brown wings Now that you have your birch bark, you're basically going to treat it like paper. You're going to want to find a surface that you don't mind getting dirty or lay down a drop cloth and also a surface that you don't mind marking on with sharp edges. You're going to need scissors, thread, beeswax, needle, and a bone awl. I chose to use linen thread. You can try other methods of adhering. I did try using a glue stick. It didn't work. I have tried staples in the past, but I liked the linen thread, the aesthetic of it, and I liked treating it with the beeswax to add some strength. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up our birch bark into strips, just like you would paper. So I'm going to condition my thread before I thread the needle as I get ready to stitch the bark together. I'm using a sashiko needle, they're very long and it had a fairly large eye to accommodate the size of the thread I was using. The 
this point, I'm going to work with the bark again. I want to make sure that I place a hole in each end. I've used a bone awl. You could use a durable needle or a fork tine or whatever sharp point you have around. And I'm going to stitch the two ends together onto the chain. So take the needle up through the hole, matching each one on the top and the bottom. I leave a tail at the end and I'm gonna use this tail to secure the whole thing together. So I just kind of hold my finger, press my finger on the back to keep that tail the right length. I'm going to go out around and back up through the bottom, through those two holes again. It's almost like you're creating a whip stitch. You want to make sure you grab the corner of it with your with your thread to secure that corner down. And then I'm just going to tie off the two ends together on the other side using a square knot. So left over right, right over left. And the wax on that linen thread really helps to kind of secure everything. And then I'm just going to trim those ends off. And that's how you can add chain upon chain upon chain. I hope you enjoyed this first edition as Rob and I prepare to celebrate Christmas and the turning of the year. We have decorated with our birch paper chain and are thoroughly enjoying all of the comfort and coziness that having a tree inside fully decorated brings. I hope wherever this finds you, you're well and in good spirits. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.